Welcome to the Kingdom. I'm Chris, and this is Good Enough Gaming. Ah, now this looks like it has the potential to be an excellent, massive, epic game of either one-page rules or Warhammer. Except, I foresee two problems here. One, everybody's playing guard. And two, nobody has any real decent terrain. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Kingdom, where today we're going to be looking at a very effective and a very fast way of painting mountains of terrain in a really, really simple but nice looking scheme. So a little while ago, I was able to get my hands on a copy of Boarding Actions for really, really cheap, and I, my plan was to use it for a Grimdark Firefight. But that's a lot of corridors and walls, and I didn't know exactly how I was going to paint it that wasn't going to take me years to get it done. Until I started looking around on the internet and I found the scheme to paint the whole thing in rust. Now those of you who've watched uh, Warhammer TV or watched the old YouTube channel, the painter Peachy, who's now gone off and made his own YouTube painting channel, I think it's called The Painting Phase, had a really simple scheme to paint the whole thing rust using a fancy schmancy new technical paint called Dirty Down Rust. Now Peachy demonstrated how to use this and the results he got were absolutely fantastic. So I watched a couple other YouTube painting videos that used the same, um, the same technical paint and they also got some really good results. And so I figured, okay, I think I can do this. So I got myself a bottle of the Dirty Down, I put together my uh, boarding action walls and I started painting them. And at first, it didn't really work out. Now, I followed Peachy's advice to the letter. I started off by assembling it in one giant line so you didn't spray over the connecting points and create that nightmare. I sprayed it in black, and then while the black was still wet, I dusted over with a fairly strong coat of a silver to give it that metallic um, sheen to it, but at the same time, the shadows would still be very dark and black. So that part was no problem. The next step then was to begin to apply the dirty down, and I did it exactly as Peachy said. But when I had finished painting the first half of the wall sections I made, the dirty down tinted the walls, it darkened them, it gave them kind of an old weathered look to them, but there was no orange rust. There were areas that were kind of red, the whole thing had like, it had a nice overall tone to it, but it seemed to me more like a shade. The next evening, I painted the other half and got the exact opposite. Plenty of very, very bright, rusty areas, but the rest of the metal was still super bright, even though I had painted, in some cases, direct, undiluted dirty down over top of them, and I thought, what the heck is going on? So back to YouTube I went, and it turns out I wasn't the only one having problems like this. Lots of folks were saying it was just coming out like a wash, and apparently I was the only one who was getting the super, super bright deposits without any kind of shading or tinting at all. And the solution all of them came up with was, I wasn't shaking the bottle hard enough. Dirty Down is very, the pigment or the, 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 the technical paint, whatever it is that causes that rust effect, it, it clumps together something fierce. And even though the bottle comes with a ball bearing inside to help shake it, I had to shake the thing really hard by hand for about 10 to 15 seconds before it actually broke away and I could hear the ball rolling around inside. So what I have had effectively done, even though I shook it up the first time, was it was still separated into its two components, the shade and the technical paint. And so the first night when I painted, I painted the entire top half, and that's why all of the metal was nicely colored, but there was no rust effect. And then by the time I painted the second night, I'd used up all the medium, and all that was left was the technical paint, so I got these super bright orange rust effects, but no tinting of the metal. So then I shook it up a lot harder. And when I say shake it, I mean I shook it like this guy. <laughs> so the problem was, I hadn't shook it enough to properly mix the pigment, the medium, the technical paint, all of that stuff together. And that's why it didn't look very good. So, you've got to shake this stuff for a very long time and you've got to shake it nice and hard. And this is where I got a lot of use out of my bottle shaker. I got this little contraption off of Amazon, I think it cost me about $20. It's meant for laboratories to shake up test tubes, but it works on paint just as well. Saves you some time. 
So I held it on there probably for a good 30 seconds to a minute. I'd hold it face up, I'd turn it upside down so the cap was facing down, I'd lay it down sideways, I'd then shake it by hand to make sure I could still hear the steely moving around inside. I shook this thing until I was certain it was as mixed as it could possibly be. So now it was time for the trial by fire. I had one section of wall that I actually didn't paint specifically because I saw what had happened with the previous two and, and I thought to myself, I'm doing something wrong here. So I'm not gonna paint this last one. I'm gonna do some research, see what I'm getting wrong, and then I'll come back and paint this one. So with it as shaken as best as I could, I went back to this last untouched wall. And this time I continued to follow Peachy's advice. He said, take a blob or you know a paintbrush full of the raw paint Put it in the cap and then heavily dilute it. Use the diluted paint to paint all over each segment and that's how you get the nice overall tinting and darkening of the metal. And then you occasionally, once you've finished a wall section, you get it one drop or one paintbrush straight from the pot and dab it on specific areas all over the segment where you want the, the more you know, really stark orange rust feature. So that way you'll have a nice kind of blend of more rusted areas, less rusted areas, but it'll all work together. It won't look quite so splotchy like my, uh, my other ones were. So I started painting. Um, I would usually do one or two sections at a time, use the water to, uh, to get it to spread nice and evenly. Once I had the water coating everything, then I'd get a couple paint brushes of just straight dirty down and I'd dab it in the areas that I wanted. If I noticed that there was a little bit too much pooling or uh, you know maybe I'd coated it on a little too much, I grabbed a paper towel and would either dab very, very gently or a wiping motion downwards to kind of clear off the metal areas that would be raised to the top to still give it a little bit of a metallic effect to it. So this took not too long. It's fairly straightforward. It's just there were so many sections of this wall. That's what took so much time. If I was only painting the uh, Gallo Dark box that Peachy was, this wouldn't have taken at all, not that long at all. But I was doing the boarding action box, which I think is two or three Gallo Dark boxes. Like, it's a lot. So I put on a good battle report to listen to on my tablet, and I just started painting. Use the water down almost as a wash to tint all the metal. Use a blob straight from the pot to add the rust effect, and then use a paper towel to clean off the most raised areas and keep some of that metallic look still going. So I finished up covering the entirety, except for the top, but of the wall sections here. And I flipped it over to take a look at that very first few panels I painted, and I was starting to like what I was looking at there. I saw a lot of different shades of the orange and the brown. I was seeing a nice strong rust color, but it wasn't looking so uniform that it looked like a paint. And I thought, my goodness, I may have actually figured this out. With the walls done and just needing to dry, all I had to do now was to apply all the dirty down to the top so that the whole thing was nice and covered, and then set it aside to dry and see what I could do about those other wall sections that I'd previously painted and messed up. So this was gonna be the moment of truth. I figured I'd start with the wall sections that had been properly tinted but not rusted because all I had to do here was take paintbrushes full of the dirty down right from the pot and just dab them in various areas. Occasionally I might get out a paper towel and you know kind of brush it a bit to give it more of a blended effect but all I needed to know here was could I add the orange rust effect on top of a dried layer of dirty down. I didn't see why it wouldn't work because all I was doing was adding on top and that's how the paint works. You can coat it on as thick as you want. So I was hoping this worked. In theory, it should work. It was just gonna be a matter of putting it on and then waiting, waiting it out to see what it looked like once it dried. And by the time I got to adding dabs to the last area of the wall section, I took a little peek back to where I started and it was working. So this meant now I had to go back through the other three or four wall sections that I had uh, already done and touch them up. And it was gonna go by really fast. It was just into the dirty down, dab it on the wall, move. So these sections were very, very, very quick. Now the other sections of the wall, the ones that had got the rust effect but not the overall metal tinting, I knew this was gonna take a little bit longer because I was literally going to have to repaint the entire wall. 
The good news was I didn't have to focus on trying to concentrate and occasionally go back into the dirty down to get a, a full strength blob to create the rust effect. So once again, in theory, I figured it should work because all I'm doing is adding another layer on top. If anything, it might make the orange rusty areas a bit more pronounced while at the same time tinting the overall metal. So it was just a case of brush of the full strength, add a couple brushes of water, and then just quickly paint over the metal and, and hope that the thing worked. This took me oh, probably about a half hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour to, if I counted the time of you know, moving one piece off the table and moving another one back on. I was able to get through almost two uh, 40K and 40 minute videos from Play on Tabletop. So that should tell you about how long it took me. So this is me working on the remaining wall sections at 10 times the speed. And boy, wouldn't it have been nice if I could have actually moved this fast. So it was tedious. It was a little bit, uh, not mind numbing, but I, I wish I had done it right the first time. So if any of you are looking to use Dirty Down to paint uh, rusty wall sections, make sure you follow the advice here. Shake the thing until your arm's about to fall off. Then you might be ready to start painting. But the good news is, of course, just like with my other um, theory, doing this thinner uh, coat of the paint on top, tinted down the overall metal, but still kept the bright orange rust spots, so it worked. So here's everything that's in the boarding actions box, and you can see that's a lot of wall sections. But it only took me about an hour and a half to fix everything. If I had done it right the first time, you're looking at an hour and a half to two hours, maybe a little over two hours, to do it all right the first time. So when it's done, this stuff looks incredible. It is literally talent in a bottle. And look at that. This thing looks like it's actually made of metal and has been left outside rusting for a long time. You, you almost can't even tell this is plastic. So super, super impressed with Dirty Down. Now there was one downside with it though, and that's that it was incredibly expensive. Well, incredibly, I mean, okay, let's back up here. So this thing here, this bottle, was $25. It was 20 bucks and $5 shipping. So just to give you an, an idea, right? So there's a contrast bottle. So you're looking about the same. This is $7. This is 25. And it took me bottle and three quarters. I mean, this one here, if I'm looking at it, that's how much is left. So to do all of that stuff you just saw there, two bottles of this, that's 50 bucks. Now it looks amazing. And true, I had a huge project. Most likely you could do fine with just one of these. But there is another way to do rust that is a lot cheaper. Believe it or not, it's faster. And I still think it looks pretty good. Allow me to present exhibit A. So if you watch the battle report that I just posted of the dwarves versus the uh, Dark Brothers, this is, was the terrain that was on the table there. So this is just the good old fashioned regular GW plastic stuff. But uh, I painted two massive boxes of this terrain and it took me a day or two. And the key is actually pretty easy. Well, it's gotten a little harder now, but let me show you that how I painted this one. Because if you don't want to spend 50 bucks on Dirty Down, you can spend probably closer to 15 or 20 and get as much terrain painted that will look like this. So the first thing is it's based in Morn Fang Brown. Now GW used to make an entire spray can of Morn Fang Brown. And so when I did the first box of this kind of terrain, that's what I used, but they don't make it anymore. So you'll either have to find some kind of alternate. You can maybe mix this uh, with some air paint thinner and spray it, but still that, that's gonna use a lot of paint. Um, the other thing you could do is head down to a home improvement store. Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, whatever, a Canadian Tire, I think would have it if you live up in Canada. Sorry folks over in uh, Europe and the UK, I'm not familiar with uh, the, the chains that are over there. But just find some kind of color that's a reddish brown. It can be super dark, it can be a little bit lighter, but a reddish brown. And just regular spray paint. So a can of that was like $5. You gotta be a little care more careful spraying it because it can very quickly uh, pool. 
So you want to do lots of very thin spritzes and, and spray from a distance. Don't get too close or it will clump up. But you spray it all that color. So once you've got your base of Morn Fang Brown, now we're going to start dry brushing layers upwards. So each layer will get either less and less of the big flat areas, like for example the panels here, or you'll concentrate more on the sharp areas, like here on the hatch. These edges are definitely going to catch stuff. So we'll start with something like Scrag Brown. There's another one, a dry brush, a specific dry brush paint. I don't know if I can actually say it without YouTube censoring it, so I'll put it across the bottom of the screen, but I might get in trouble if I say it just because of the word at the end. So just to be safe, it's that, but you can use this as well. And you'll dry brush, you know, big patches. So all of this will have the Morn Fang Brown on it, and then I'll do this whole bit in that Scrag Brown. Let's put that up there. You know, each panel here, because that's where a lot of light's gonna hit, I'll get a lot of ridges here, especially along the top of the piping here, but that's the Scrag Brown. Then the next thing I'll do is a layer of Rise of Rust. Something very bright, very orange. If you don't have the, the dry paint Rise of Rust, you can use anything like um, Fire Dragon Bright. I think probably Troll Slayer Orange would be a bit better. The Fire Dragon Bright might be too much, but it depends how rusty you want it to look. It's totally up to you. The point is you have a lighter brown, then you have some kind of orange, and then you move on to a beige. So Tyrant Skull, Ushab T-Bone, Screaming Skull, Terminata Stone, just, I mean, these two, you almost can't even tell the difference. Just something like this to get the absolute edges. So on here, it just catches the top of this pipe. You can see it just on the edge of the hatch right there. So very, very sparing. Then once you've got all of those down, the last thing you do, you get some Nylac Oxide, and you get yourself some tissue or paper towel. Gob on the Nylac Oxide. You can see, I, I just painted it, all, not quite over the whole thing, but in a lot. You, you can gob the whole thing over and then quickly follow in behind and dab it or swipe down to give it that kind of that pull effect that it looks like it's slowly dripping but you can also just dab it and it will stick in the corners it will stick in the ridges here it will get in all of the back recessed areas like down here and when it's all dry that's what you get and i did all of the terrain you saw in that video in two evenings using those colors so i think either one of these i think either one of these this one is more realistic. This one's a little bit more kind of cartoonish. Not necessarily cartoonish, but you get it. It, it. it looks painted, but it still looks good, whereas this is meant to look ultra realistic. This is meant to still convey that, yes, it's rusty, but you know, it doesn't look quite as natural. But either one of these, this version with the dirty down, a little bit more expensive, takes a little bit more time, a little bit messier. This is a lot faster. It may not look quite as good, but I think it's just as effective. And to show you an example of another piece up close, uh, here is one of those plasma generators. Same thing, I didn't want to worry about trying to paint the skull and all that. I didn't even want it for this one, I was so lazy, I didn't even want to paint the individual coils in there, so I said, this thing's dead. You know, this one's ran out of, this one had ran out of juice a long time ago, and you can see the exact same thing. Start with the dark brown, move to a lighter brown, then to an orange, then to a beige, and then finally the gray, or the green, I'm sorry, for the verdigris. So, I think either one of those is good enough.